Penguinauts! I am the Beardy Penguin, and welcome to Kerbal Space Program Collaborative Warfare! There's a beautiful Kerbin up there, and we're going to tear it to pieces and nuke it and... Pretty much rip it to pieces in the oncoming series with four other YouTubers. If you didn't watch the trailer, I suggest you check it out so you know the rules and everything that's going on. But essentially, myself and four other YouTubers are going to go to war. So, uh, here we go, Collective Warper. You'll see 15 flights in progress. They aren't actually flights. They are actually just flags because we need to place flags to mark our ownership of all of our bases. I'll quickly head into the tracking station and show you everything. So, at the moment, it's only myself who's marked uh, all my bases because this is turn one and I'm going first. So everyone needs to take their turn before they actually mark all their bases. And we can't do anything aggressive on our first turn. It's just setting up defenses and maybe launching a satellite, and that's about it. So, here's all my land. Um, I've got a map coming up about now showing... I'm blue area, by the way. Uh, that shows all the land that I own, roughly. I just sort of drew it quickly. But uh, here are all my bases. So I've got my South Pole Station here. Uh, we've got a shelf. We've got a couple of islands here. Um, we own... a Actually, a decent portion of the desert. I think our territory literally ends at these mountains there, and that heads into Tape Gaming's territory. He owns pretty much the re he owns the rest of the desert and all the way up to the North Pole and around there. So Tape Tape is probably the biggest threat. Let's be honest. I'll be discussing the other YouTubers as well. Uh, we own a couple of ships actually. We own the KSS Odyssey and uh, we own an oil platform and also own the KSS Kerman. Neither of them, they're both destroyers and obviously one oil platform. We don't own the aircraft carrier. Somebody else has that. I'm not entirely sure who has that, actually. I've got a piece of paper here saying who owns everything. Okay, that's, that's Space Game Junkie. He has the aircraft carrier. That's going to be fun to take, considering I've already practiced landing on that and none of them went very well. Okay, we've got a great escape there. It's a good play on words. Not really, but that's okay. Uh, green Basin, Green Coast, and Misty Cliffs. They're all very close together. Good, pretty good forward defense. Anyway, so as I said, Tape owns all up here, and to see his bases, we're just going to activate Base Boss quickly. Here we are. So obviously, as you see, I've marked all mine. But Tape owns all up here. We have about 13 launch sites each. Uh, here's Twitchy. Now, a lot of people were saying that Twitchy doesn't get any land, but on the map I showed, it, it has an effect of making things near the equator look smaller, and things near the pole looking much larger. So... Although he does he does have the least land, but here's what he does have. Um, he controls obviously the KSC. He owns Black Crags and he owns Jebediah's Island. Now those are three massive strongholds. They're going to be very difficult to take. He's got three launch sites on each, so he's going to have a lot of defenses there. Plus, all of his bases are pretty close together, which means if you take one base, you're going to have three bases pretty much immediately around it that are going to be able to counterattack pretty easily. Although Tape's probably got a little airstrip and just sort of jump into Black Crags. So I, I'm assuming Tape's going to take Black Crags and I don't know. Twitchy is definitely going on the defensive. His Kerbals do not want this war. They're a very peaceful nation so he's just going to keep building up more and more defenses I assume. Then we head up here into Space Game Junkie's land. He owns this entire continent and a few islands and stuff around there. And he also encroaches upon um, Agonarch Industries' territory. He owns all of these, and the KSS Kermansov, I believe, in an earlier engagement, he's taken all of those. Then, we head into um, Agonarch's territory. I think he has the most land. He owns, from here, this entire continent, so nearly the entire side of Kerbin. And it doesn't look like it from the map, but he does own this whole continent. Um, and all up here and everything. I think this is this encroaches into my land around there. I, I own all of this, but I don't actually have any bases along there. My closest base is South Point. So I'm pretty sure Agonarch is the most land. Uh, Twitchy is definitely a defensive nation. Um, that's all I can tell about him from now. Tape has got conflicting borders with everyone, and he's got bases in loads of strategic positions, although none on this side. He's got them all down on this side near me, which is kind of scary. Uh, so he's definitely offensive, and I know the thing about Tape is he's built a lot, he's putting a lot into his naval warfare, and he doesn't have many, or, or any, boat launch points, and I do, and I think everyone else does, so he's definitely going to be looking to take some of those, so hopefully I can use that to make some alliances to protect against him. Uh, myself, well, I'm, I'm done here, there aren't really any bases in the south, to be honest, 
this this South Pole Station can't really reach any. I guess it could reach too far, Cape. I don't know. Um, but my, <laughs> I'm not a particularly offensive or defensive nation. Uh, I've got a few things clustered around here, but I'm not entirely sure what I'm going to be doing. I'm just going to kind of wing it. So we need to defend these launch sites, and for that, I've created this. It's a land automated defense drone, or LAD for short. Do what I did there. <laughs> anyway, so these are pretty powerful pieces of kit. We're not allowed to go ridiculously overboard with our defense systems. It should be possible to destroy them, and believe me, this has got more than a few vulnerabilities. But since the other nations maybe come up, come on, keep driving. No, oh, it runs out of electric charge. Well, that's a uh, that's an oversight. I should have probably put some batteries on it. <laughs> well, there we go. We found one vulnerability already. Uh, it's got four of these large intercept missiles. It's going to take out bombers. You know, it can get up to five kilometers. Uh, that's its maximum guard range. And then it's got these slightly smaller sidewinder missiles to take out fighters or whatever. And obviously, then it has these turrets, which are very good when it gets when things get close, and also they're very good for taking out incoming missiles. Uh, that's their primary focus, and it, it works reasonably well. Uh, but obviously. These things are not indestructible in any way, shape, or form. It's just, uh, yeah, I think I'm going to add some batteries onto the next one. Okay, so for the LAD 2.0, I've decided to add as many batteries as possible. So we've got uh, obviously two there, two there, we've got two on the bottom, and then we've finally, just for luck, got one there. So we've increased our electric charge to over two and a half thousand rather than the 20 it was before. So while we're driving, we've just got to be careful not to knock over the flag. That kind of marks that we own this area, and then we can just drive off the edge. Ta-da! See, this thing can take a beating. <laughs> this thing's designed to deflect missiles, so it's got to be able to take um, <laughs> a bit of impact into the ground. Otherwise, it wouldn't really be doing its job correctly. Hanbert Cape, South Pole Station, Kerbin's Bottom, the Shelf. Arusiat Island, South Point, Green Coast, Misty Cliffs, Arequibo Observatory, Twin Peaks Valley, KSS Kermin, and last but not least, the KSS Odyssey, protecting the Ocean Odyssey platform just there. That may look like it's got some pretty impressive guns on it, like the KSS Kermin, but they're really just people with facades to try and scare people off. Uh, the real weaponry is all here. Uh, yeah, as you see, these these guns they don't actually work. Anyway, war hasn't actually been declared yet. Um, still in the planning stages. We know war is coming. That's why we're setting up all of these defenses, etc. But we're going to look to try and make alliances as fast as possible to try and protect ourselves from the territorial Arctic protection on top. Because at the moment, they're probably our largest threat, but with all our naval bases and everything. So. Uh, we're going to keep an eye on them. So, before I conclude my turn, there's one last thing that I would like to do, and that's launch a communication satellite. Now, I could launch a spy satellite if I want to see enemy troop movements, but I think I'm going to do that next turn, since nobody's going to be doing anything aggressive this turn. And also, I want to be working on alliances pretty quickly, because, as I said, I do not trust tape in the slightest. So, let's look at where we are right now. We're pretty much on the equator, actually. Um, yeah, looks like Green Basin is pretty much on the equator, so we shouldn't have any problem getting into an tutorial orbit. So, uh, without any further ado, let's go. Ta da We've got some guns! Because I really will not appreciate someone destroying my communication satellite, so I've decided to have it packing some weaponry. I don't know if it's a little excessive or whatever, but I really do not trust people or the other the other nations not to just fly straight up and just destroy this. And there, oh, whoa, <laughs> we cut that a little bit too short, we just have a look of fuel and we've got to, our periapsis to 67 kilometers and our periapsis to 83, so uh, we cut that 
a teeny weeny bit slim, but it's pretty much in orbit. It's not going to deorbit, um, even though it's dipping very slightly into the atmosphere. Anyway, we're going to extend our communitron. There we are. Very pretty. And then we're going to activate our guard mode, because as I said, I do not trust anyone. <laughs> um, maybe I put a little bit too much ammo on this thing. Jeez, I think a bit more ammo than the uh, defense drones actually have. So that those that is not light. So yeah, probably could have taken a bit of that off. But oh well. Anyway, we're going to show our guard menu. Activate guard mode. Put our scan interval on two. Field of view 360 degrees. Put our guard range at five kilometers. Uh, it won't attack anything that comes within to 5 kilometers unless it's hostile. So unless it's actually declared itself hostile, uh, we won't be blowing them up. Otherwise, we would probably be blowing random satellites out of the sky, and I don't think other nations would particularly appreciate that. Anyway, that has been my first turn, and setting up defensive drones, etc. of the uh, Kerbal Space Program Collaborative Warfare. Please check out everyone else's first turn, how everyone else is getting on. I'm going to be creating a playlist with everyone's videos, not just mine. And I hope to see you all next time.